So then we'd like to move to the, the head here, as it's called. So the head contains the processing system as well as the winching system. Um, and again, to use another analogy, it's, it's very similar to a winching system where there's a cable attached to a device that uh, not only measures tension, it can measure the, the speed or the rate of change of speed. Um, <coughs> and this will attach to either the cervical piece which as you can see here, or attaching to the lumbar piece as we, um, as we pull for lumbar traction. Um, everything is a, is a touch screen, so again, this, this DTS system, uh, the biggest advancement is that processing that allows us to manipulate all of the parameters. Uh, it's very user friendly. Your system can store protocols, so there's pre-programmed protocols that can be stored in here, and again, there's also the opportunity and the flexibility to manipulate those parameters, to change protocols, or to establish your own protocols that you may see more fit for use in your patient population or in your clinic. Again, everything is very simple. Um, there's lots of information that you'll find here in the, in the DTS system uh, describing the benefits of traction and some of the clinical protocol parameters for that. Um, you'll see the, the most basic process that you, can, that you can go through here are the pre-programmed protocols and just essentially touching on the area of concern. So for instance, if we were going to do a lumbar traction protocol, then again, it brings us to another screen where it gives us some options that uh, describes our, our patient presentation. We would choose the presentation that, that best describes their particular condition. Um, it will then bring us to a screen that uh, gives us an opportunity to, to look at what the parameter settings are. So if you feel that it doesn't necessarily fit your patient presentation, it was something that you wanted to change, then you can do so here by simply hitting the edit button. When we look on this screen, and, and again, to me, this is the, the largest benefit of this new DTS technology is our ability to manipulate all these parameters. Essentially, what you see here is anything that's in dark blue, we have the opportunity to manipulate. So we can change um, the stepwise fashion. So as we're increasing or preparing for the actual treatment protocols, we refer to that as progression. When we finish a treatment protocol and we're coming down from a treatment protocol or coming back down to uh, normal resting position, we call that regression. So we have the opportunity to manipulate the progression and the regression from intermittent versus static. So if we wanted to provide intermittent or static uh, traction during the progression or the regression phases, we have that opportunity. We also have the opportunity to change the number of steps that we can take. So this progression is the number of steps that will provide us for um, introduction to the actual treatment, whether it be intermittent or static traction. So again, we can, we can actually make the progression intermittent or static, uh, and we can also manipulate the number of steps that we would like to take during that progression phase. And again, we'll, we'll talk about in a, in a moment as to how we would uh, determine that. We also have the opportunity to change from intermittent to cycle and to static when it comes to the actual treatment. We can change the treatment time as well to uh, match a particular, a particular protocol. Um, and again, in reference to the regression, very similar to the progression phase where we can change that from static to intermittent as also change the number of, of steps involved. Uh, the intensities. If we're doing a static pull pattern, a static treatment, then there's only going to be one intensity. However, we can manipulate that um, to meet the, the intensity, the needs of the, of the patient. When we're doing an intermittent or cycle tractions, then we can set the max and the min level. So we can set the higher intensity and then we can also set the, the lower intensity based on uh, the patient presentation and based on our, our particular protocols. We can also edit the rest and hold times for not only the treatment, so during an intermittent traction we have an opportunity to adjust the upper level of intensity and determine how long we would like to hold that intensity, as well as the lower intensity, we have an opportunity to determine how long we would like to spend at the lower intensity. 
uh, in relation to the progression and the regression phases, if you choose a stepwise fashion to the progression, then we can also manipulate the amount of time spent within each one of those phases during the progression. And similarly, we can do that with the regression phase as well. The speed, we can change the speed of how quickly that intensity is going to change. So for instance, during intermittent traction, if we wanted to go from a lower intensity of 20 kilograms and a higher intensity of, of, uh, of 35 kilograms, we can also change the speed on how quickly the machine will increase the intensity or decrease the intensity. We have options of 30, 50, and 100% speed, and that's based on uh, how quickly the, the device moves. So during intermittent traction, if for instance we're at a lower intensity of 20 kilograms and we want it to go to a higher intensity of 35 kilograms, then the device can move at a very slow speed, which would be the 30%, all the way up to the higher speed, which would be 100%. And again, that's something that we didn't have in the earlier devices where we only had one speed. Slower speeds can be more comfortable and more accommodating to people that are in the uh, acute phases of, of a particular injury. So even during traction, we'll have an opportunity to change some of these parameters, which we'll look at when we have someone on traction. Anything that is still highlighted in blue, we can go back in and change some of the parameters during an actual treatment if that's something that, uh, that we decided we would like to accomplish. After we have completed editing the parameters, uh, we can go back and we can simply start from that screen or we can go back and we can reevaluate the parameters that are set up here in the, in the screen so that way uh, we can determine if anything else needs to be changed. From then on, everything is essentially established. Then we have an opportunity to actually adjust the patient. There's a rope release switch right here which we have um, the ability to change whenever we're ready to adjust and attach the patient to the particular device. We just release it, it'll pull the tension so we get back to the normal tension and we can essentially begin the treatment patterns. After we're completed with a treatment, we'll have two options. One option is not to save anything, um, where it will just default and the machine will shut down. The other option is to save the treatment protocols. And we can either save the treatment protocol to a patient card um, or we can save again, specific protocols within the device itself. So if we wanted to use specific protocols consistently, and again, if they were something of benefit within our particular uh, clinic, then we can save the, the more common protocols so that way we don't have to go in, manipulate, and edit. Um, the patient cards can also be used to save the patient parameters. So we can have an individual card for each individual patient, and that allows us to track their their progress as well. And there are some other things that we can look at with the patient cards in, the, uh, in a moment.